This has been a different week than what Hada and I are used to covering. There have been several very real, very serious things happening in the Melee community this week, and we have results. We'll get to that towards the end. But we want to lead off with topics that have been been at the forefront of everyone's mind. We can start with the most recent news. We all recently learned within the past 24 hours about Chillin who most of you would know from either the documentary or from commentary, from content, because he has a stream and a YouTube channel. He's got all that stuff going on. And Chillin has been part of the Melee community since literally the beginning, back in 2002, posting on Smashboards, starting out by being someone who would run tournaments, who would be a top player nowadays is taking a bit of a backseat. But what I'm trying to say is Chillin recently went through surviving a stroke and the GoFundMe that has been set up, the good news there in less than 24 hours, more than a hundred thousand dollars has been raised. It's been really cool to see that, but best wishes to Chillin and his recovery and to his family and friends who are supporting him through that, that everybody can help Chillin get through this and that the GoFundMe helps pay the bills because this is this is America. So Hada, I, I will turn it over to you. I don't know. I, I feel like I covered everything. I don't want to put you on the spot. I just anything that you wanted yeah. to add. I mean, it's uh definitely a friend or family member having a stroke hits home for me, uh personally. Uh God, maybe like eight years ago. Uh on Father's Day actually my father himself had a stroke, a pretty serious oh. stroke and so um, I had to myself perform CPR on him, wait for the paramedics to arrive. We had to take him down to the hospital. He is now very alive, very well, in great shape. He's looking great. Um, but yeah, it's it's a scary thing to see a loved one or see a friend just on the floor unresponsive. And uh, from what I understand, that was the case for Chillin, just uh, you know, two days straight with uh, no responses and uh, finally found him in the, on the floor in his bedroom. And um, it's it's a really scary, really serious thing. So if you guys are at all feel impassioned by the story or have felt touched in any way by Chillin and his content and his legacy in the Smash community, I would strongly recommend either taking a look at the GoFundMe, reading through what's going on, um, tossing a couple bucks, because a little does go a long way, especially with such a big, passionate community that we have here. So would strongly recommend checking out the GoFundMe. We will have that in the description below. Um, yeah, it's it's a, uh, it's it's a uh, yeah. Conducting a stroke is uh, now. I believe Chillin does need open heart surgery. Like this is some very serious medical procedures, and um, I do firmly believe that um, I'm hoping Chillin gets through it. It's a very serious, a very a uh, trying time for him and his family, and you know, lots of love and support. And um, I know I'll be um, donating to the GoFundMe um, right after we're done recording this podcast. So. I strongly recommend everyone else do the same. So again, best wishes to Chillin, his family, his friends. It's going to be a long road, like you said, and we don't know as of now when the open heart surgery is going to happen. We just know that it's on the table. It's going to be scheduled, I imagine, sometime in the near future. So you can continue to follow along if we hear anything related to that happening or if it was successful and and all that stuff, we will continue to let y'all know for ourselves. And then I think there, there is there is a Twitter that I, I want to say is related to H2IL Productions or something to that effect. I will put that in the description below. That's Chillin's brother who I think put out the first tweet, uh, you know, sounding the bells and letting everybody know what's going on. So you'll probably get updates from there as well. And Cyrain was the tweet. Cyrain's tweet was the one that everybody was sharing around leading to the GoFundMe as well. So you'll probably hear from either Cyrain or from Chillin's brother on Twitter if you want to continue to get follow-ups with how Chillin is doing and, and about when the surgery is going to be happening. So we move on from that. Earlier this week, earlier this week, it's, this is also another serious topic. And there's really no other way to introduce this other than just by saying... After the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial concludes, and I don't know all the details about that, but the trial's done. The jury hands out their decision. And 
afterwards uh, on one of Mango's streams, he says something to the effect of, well, that's a thing that can still happen between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. They could still get it on. And I would love to see that. Those were the kind of comments that were being thrown around in so many words. And a couple of people, most notably Jojo from New York, New York City Melee said, that's not okay. And I'm going to call that out as not okay, because that is not welcoming to any any woman or, or any person who's sensitive to those kind of conversations, that's not okay. Which leads to a lot of different discourse about what's, what's towing the line and what, what's too far, what's locker room talk, this, that, and the third. So I'm introducing the topic. I have a few thoughts, but Hada, I'll turn it over to you if you want to provide any other details that I missed and then any thoughts that you want to add first, if that's okay with you. Right. Um, yeah, a, a lot of, there, there's a few bigger streamers that have gotten in some trouble and definitely been in some hot water when, when it comes to making a little risque comments making um sexist homophobic transphobic a, lo a lot of comments this is not a a one-off issue and it's um definitely happened to this scale and definitely to a lot worse in the past and with a lot of other content creators the difference is, is i i i think this is um the culture built around mango specifically tends to lead to the fact that it's like he kind of gets a pass on this sort of things and i think that's the main reason why people are taking this a little more seriously this time around uh, it's like oh that's just mango being mango and it's like well yes and no um we all know mango's making a joke mango's making a making a jab for for the for the boys that sort of lock like you're saying does that sort of lock room talk but there is a point where you have to put a hard line put a hard break um when it comes to either being professional versus being you know a little bit of a, of a jokester a little bit of a comedian and um i think we really are trying to draw that line in the sand right now and i think a lot of streamers a lot of personalities um their natural i guess like sense of humor does inherently toe that line and i think mango is one of those people and I'm not defending him in any way, but what I'm really trying to get at is we really need to readjust and reevaluate what we value and what is the most inclusive because we are moving in a more progressive way, especially in the greater bulk of the community. And I think being more inclusive, being in, um, being more accepting, and um, adding the adding a culture that's more accepting to um women people of color um people in the lgbtq plus community and it's it's conversations like that that are really really jarring like especially with such a big community that mango has if you're someone who's just trying to get into melee you're gonna go to twitch you're gonna go to twitter you're gonna go to one of those big social media platforms and you're gonna try to you know get some content and you're gonna try to see what this is all about and if that's the your first introduction to like oh well one of the top melee streamers is um you know being making disgusting lewd comments at amber heard uh, at amber heard's dispense it's like all right well yeah it's that's that definitely leaves a bad taste in your mouth if that's your first interaction coming in um and i think that's the main point that jojo was trying to make um i don't think he's necessarily saying that mango's a hideous disgusting human being but definitely more of a you know if you're trying to enter someone into the community that's probably not the best way to do it it's hard to say with Mango specifically holding him to a certain standard because the way that I have viewed Mango, especially in the past few years, is following his own advice, which is saying, don't take me too seriously when I talk about stuff. So I don't really take Mango seriously at, at nearly anything that he says because I understand that the culture he grew up in and the person that he is is someone who is going to be messing around 95% of the time. So who comes into the stream and understands that right away? Who are the people who are young enough where they haven't lived enough life and have the maturity to understand that this kind of conversation is not necessarily great to take out to the rest of the, the rest of the life that that person is living and especially not to their own smaller section of the melee community and trying to make anyone in the room where they're talking about, something inappropriate, making somebody else feel unwelcome and out of place is not what we're trying to do. And Mango himself would probably say the same thing. It's just that you also have to understand that this is a person. So 
the I've tried to go back and forth between do you hold Mango to a standard or do you try to tell the audience <laughs> you can't you can, you have to be extremely extremely careful with this kind of conversation in a broader in a broader audience but I I I guess I land on on the part as of now that there's only so much you could do with Mango himself he's been streaming for 10 plus years and he's or for 10 at least 10 years and and Mango's just going to do what Mango does I think that the best thing I can do is to say I don't condone that kind of conversation when there are other people who are in the room that w would be offended by that because maybe it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation where you're joking around and you understand okay that's not gonna leave the room right you're not gonna try to make somebody else who would be offended by that offended by it but that's that's just me so what led to Ryo beat so this is uh this is the transition what led to Ryo beat deciding to step down from running NYC Melee events, specifically nightclub, was offering his thoughts on this kind of topic. And then more or less, I think the response that the, some of the responses that Ryobi got kind of uh, was like the straw that broke the camel's back in a sense. I think Ryobi, if I had to guess, has been looking to transition out of TOing for a little while. I mean, working full time and then spending 20 plus hours of his spare time so 60 plus hours a week, 70 plus hours a week of doing some kind of thing and a lot of it being melee related, TOing nightclub and and everything else, running the social media, running the stream, all that stuff, I think was starting to become a lot for Robbie. And so I think officially it was just, it was time to time to go. And I think this was more or less just that last stone that needed to fall for Robbie to say, I, I can't do this anymore. I don't have enough in me to be able to do all the things that are required of someone in my position to do. So I'm going to find people to take over the tasks and jobs that I have within the mainly community. And then I'm going to move on. And I'm, I'm sad to see Ryobi go and I'm sorry to see that this was what caused it. But I think what I need to tell myself and I think what people might need to understand is that Ryobi was probably looking for a way to start to transition out in the near future anyway, uh, especially as he's going to hopefully be getting into teaching more and more this upcoming school year full time and and everything else like that so sad to see ryobi go but it is unfortunate that it wasn't the result of better circumstances causing him to say i'm ready to go yeah with nico specifically uh you know knowing him personally he is a very very passionate person he sees every human being in the room and he wants to make their day better he is a truly a heart of gold sort of individual and with that you know with all the benefits that come from that come an extraordinarily heavy burden to a heavy burden of expectation not only given to you but on oneself put on oneself um in order to try to make that happen so i'm not shocked that you know that that battery of expectation is starting to get towards the lower end and i'm I'm hoping that he uses this as a time to refresh, recuperate, um, and, you know, focus on himself for a bit. Because knowing Nico, I know he, every single thing he did was for NYC Melee, and it was not for Ryobi, is the thing. And um, especially when it comes to TOing, there's, as the head TO, uh, there's a lot more that goes into just, rather than just the tournament-specific duties that are attached to being the main TO. So there's, of course, running the stream, making the bracket, getting the venue, um, securing sponsors, running events, running, um, like, sponsorship events, and et cetera, et cetera. There's coordinating, there's talking to top players, there's organizing top player travel and flight and, and um, trying to get your featured players out from out of region. There's um, marketing, there's like almost hr related duties where you're having to deal with backlash like let's say like even in like just the most recent um uh nightclub in general there was a situation where one of the commentators was very very inebriated and was saying some really um rough things on the mic to a lot of outer region players and um you know the person who has to deal with that is ryobi so ryobi being the main team is like having people in his DM being like, dude, why is this guy on the mic? Why is this guy, you know, 
why are you lying someone who's so drunk who's so degenerate on the mic to you know make a fool out of everybody you know you know why is that happening and of course like that's not ryo beats fault it's it's just one of those situations where because he is the man in charge he is the one who has to deal with it um and that's exhausting that's really 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 exhausting and uh especially for someone with nico's personality it's 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 definitely a a very heavy burden and you know god willing you know nico at least stays in the in the community as like a on like a little bit of an arm's reach sort of thing. Like let, I definitely want him to focus on his career, focus on being his best version of himself. I know his social battery is extraordinarily low right now. I mean, I just want what's Nico to do what's best for him, but I definitely selfishly don't want to see him go too far away because I know I, I love Ryobi and I love having him in the community. Um, but God knows that if he just, as long as he's doing what's best for him, I'll be happy. And I think the important thing there, you were talking about all the responsibilities that TOing a big scene like New York City mainly has, is just how often you are being pinged and DM'd and how much you have to do yourself. I think there were a couple of times where Ryobeat shared like how many D open DMs he has of, of people that he's trying to reach, people trying to reach him. And he, just doing that alone, even besides anything else, that has to get to be very, very difficult to continue to put up with because for myself, and I think you understand this as well, Hada, to a certain extent, that if, you're, if your attention is being diverted in so many directions, it becomes so it becomes such a noise in your head that you can't handle a certain amount. It's almost as if you have a pot that gets too full of water and it starts to spill over and there are things that you start to miss. And I know that if you just spend too much time, even just in that, how do you have any sort of social energy left to be able to do the kind of things that you want to do, like working out or hanging out with your friends outside of the melee community or, 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 or anything else. So I agree with you. I would really love to see Ryo beat hanging out at some point, but no longer having to be responsible for throwing the event together in the first place. I know that there are people who are helping out with NYC Melee. Something that I asked Dark Gen X when we talked at Pound was, are there people who are starting to come up that you and Ryo beat are starting to not to, to, to train per se, but I said, it just seems like something that, is going to be really important for the NYC melee scene, especially because of how big it is just to have people look around for people who could help run things and help take over in the event that you guys start to step down. So it sounds like there's going to be people who will do just that. And so for melee, things are going to be taken care of that all the same, we will, we will miss Rob beat. Hopefully we'll see him hanging out at an event in the near future <laughs> and just, just specifically hanging out. <laughs> yeah i know that um at least back when i was really traveling it's it's one of the most fun things to go to a major i'm sure you know you coming back from pound very recently you can say for certain that it's just a very good time i mean yeah it's a it's a little bit of a commitment to to get on out there get the travel done get the pay the hotel fees all that good stuff but going to a major just to hang out to be a spectator and not with the full intention of you know trying super hard trying to win or trying to make a crap ton of content or running the event but if you're just there to spectate if you're just there to have fun oh my god it's going to a tournament going to a major is a great time so i'm hoping that after a little bit of a break rob you can come back to something like a big house or a genesis and you know just feel that energy feel that flow and all that positivity come back but you know speaking of tournaments we do have a couple results to talk to you guys about um i'll just go ahead and lead off with uh my personal favorite of course we talking about the salt mine from this past weekend guys if you want some awesome VODs to go check out, go check out the All Chat Esports YouTube channel. These VODs should be uploaded in the next couple of days. But we had a 15-set um, series between KJH and Hungrybox that will knock your socks off. I'm talking some of the best Melee I have seen in years. It was absolutely unreal. Um, also had an interview with HBox after the fact. So if you want to go ahead and check out actually the, the Twitch VOD, you can actually go to all chat esports on twitch and go ahead and check out the full top eight vod um which will be on the all chat channel um also some other amazing sets we did have um hbox versus salt um we had um there was a dreffen versus um dreffen played a couple sets like we had dreffen we had jflex we had 
Warmer, Bobby Big Balls, Salt, KJH, Hungry Box, and I'm missing one person. Uh, it'll come to me. Regardless, amazing, 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 amazing top eight. Um, KJH versus H Box was a set that will go down in history. It's probably the greatest extended set to happen at the Salt Mine. So, game five, um, going to KJH in winners, and then a ten game set in grand finals. Of course, you know, knowing that you know H Box at least took three set. And I'm not going to spoil who won in the end. Um, but moving forward, we also have one final result. We did have a also another uh, Ben and Ben and JFlex also had an amazing set at Hold That L7 in Chicago. Ben did end up making a pretty extended losers run and becoming the Hold That L7 champion. Uh, JFlex taking it all the way through winners and Ben taking it in the loser side reset. Also an amazing run from Zamu. Zamu falling very, very early to no fluxes, I believe, in winner's round two of the top 64 brackets. So Zamu going on a crushing um, loser's run all the way from, I think, loser's round two up till top four of the event. So huge ups to Zamu on an amazing loser's run as well. I believe finally falling to Ben for third place. But yeah, going from losing to Fluxes and then crushing everyone in his path into the top three finish, huge ups to Zamu and the entire Arkansas scene. And uh, yeah, those are some amazing results in Melee. And um, Jesse, what do you think? I wanted to talk a little bit about the Ben versus J Flex situation because at Hold That L7, when they met in, I believe it was either Winner's Semis or Winner's Finals, J Flex looked like he was able to sort of edge out Ben in a lot of different scenarios and which I thought was interesting, but <clears throat> it was, it was only until about losers finals that Ben started to flip a switch. It seemed like most of the time he was having to scrap and play at a, at sort of like a C game level, but then some, something happened where all of a sudden Ben started to look like, Oh, Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So when they met again in grand finals in the first set, it looked like J flex could hang, but it already looked like Ben was, was going to, was going to reset and win. And then in the second set, it was three Oh, it was, it was not close. And yeah, which was really unfortunate for JFlex because when you when you are sitting winner side grands, you say to yourself, "All I got to do is win one set, and it's a chic ditto." So, and they were playing with chain grabs. So, the, I don't want to say that there's like <laughs> that it's easy because it's not easy. But unfortunately, there were some missed chain grabs by on, on JFlex's part, and you know it's tough because you we play melee in a single day tournament with 200 plus entrants and i'm sure it's tough to stay on the entire time but congrats to ben for hanging in there and for somehow saving his best melee for the end of the day i'm always impressed i just gotta say i'm always impressed by how melee players there there's just there are just times where yes it's hard to do this but there are times where you can seemingly flip a switch somehow play your best melee at the end of a long day like that that to me is is just really cool to see really cool so congrats to ben for winning that event and shout outs to i want to say shout outs to seal who i'll be having onto the podcast sometime next week seal and and larfin for larfin for commentating that event they both play chic so it was really cool to hear their perspective on it and how i want to give shout outs to you and for trey the trash man for commentating that amazing salt mine the other night i got to watch grand finals of hungry box versus kjh and it was amazing so yes please everyone go check out the all chat youtube you're gonna put the Oh no, you did spoil who won Hada because you said the Hbox interview. Oh, you wouldn't yeah. have interviewed oh. Hbox. <laughs> I just really like talking to Hbox. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Put that on the pod too. Put it on the <laughs> pod, dude. Sorry, I know that's not your job. <clears throat> so yeah, well. that was an amazing event to see. That is, in my opinion, one of the best online sets ever it's it's worthy of being considered just in, in, in any sort of sense a legitimate melee grand finals game 10 set it was so cool to watch and seeing all these different conversions and back and forth it was the exact kind of melee you would want to see at at an evo or at big house mm -hmm. at genesis that would be if if there were 70,000 more people watching that event last night, like there should have been dadgummit, then it would have been 
amazing super super amazing for 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 anyone who watched they would have loved that set so please when you subscribe to the all chat youtube channel keep an eye for that game 10 grand finals it was amazing yeah we were actually saying after the broadcast finished myself and slum and trey were like dude if that happened for at a genesis or at an evo or at a big house top eight if that was the grand final set of any major IRL major, it'd be in contention for one of the best sets of all time. Like it was, it was an amazing set, ladies and gentlemen. And you know, mad props to KJH for whipping out some of the best performances on Fox I've ever seen, and an amazing, amazing run from HBox as well. HBox whipping out a honestly one of the craziest puff zero to deaths. It's the second to last stock of the tournament. Um, there's no rest involved. It was just a crazy extended puff combo. My jaw dropped. Zero to death. It was crazy. And then, of course, KJH whipping out some of the most high-tech, high-velocity Fox conversions extensions that I have ever seen. And, guys, like I, I can't say too much more about it without going a little too crazy. So, please, just do yourself a favor and go check out the set. These amazing recoveries by KJH. I could, like, I was so impressed. So... As we start to wrap up, one more time as a reminder, the GoFundMe to Chillin's, <clears throat> to Chillin's uh, recovery aid and uh, also for the long road of open heart surgery and recovery that is ahead of him, please go check that out. Read the story. Uh, drop a few bucks if you're able to <clears throat> because like Hada said, it goes a really long way and we appreciate all the support that's gone into it so far. That's what I love about the Melee community, by the way. Even if, <clears throat> even if we are... Uh, occasionally at odds and if we have different things that are being talked about and it's and it's hard to get through i love the fact again that in, in times of need and this has been proven time and time again hada that we will support each other and seeing the love and support and, and financial support coming out from all these people from melee and from chillin's life this has been incredible to see because in less than 24 hours already over a hundred thousand dollars raised and i'm so thankful that i get to say i'm i'm part of the melee community so how to uh, any other thoughts you have and that'll be it for us yeah uh, again just wanted to echo just one more time please just if you're able two four five twenty bucks uh, as much as like you find yourself able even if like every single person who viewed this podcast donated like two bucks that would instantly you know bounce up bounce up that exponential factor is going to make a huge difference and more than anything guys at, in moments like this i don't want anyone to panic um of course you know uh, health issues can plague the best of us more than anything drink some water go for a walk um say hello to a friend and stay in touch because it's situations like that specifically where if you aren't in touch with your family, you want to make sure that you're at least having some open line of communication. So if, if some of those situations were to happen to you, you want someone to come out there and, and be worried and someone to come looking for you. So you don't want to be a case where, you know, you're living by yourself, you're living a, reclu a recluse life and you're on the floor by yourself for a week and no one can help you. So you want to make sure, you know, you know, love each other. Just make sure that you doing a little bit to keep yourself healthy and make sure that you have a support system that will help you in a time of need, like someone went to go help chillin', which is amazing. So there's definitely a situation where that could have been a lot worse. And I'm glad that his family and his friends realized they hadn't heard from him in a couple of days and said so they went and they found him and they made sure that he was able to at least have a fighting chance to come back to us. So uh mad love to his family and his friends. Thank you so much for everything that you've done and hopefully we can uh, check in on Chillin soon. Hopefully he will be okay in the next couple of days. And that is it for us this week. We hope to come back to you with, uh, with, with more news next week, especially more positive news. Either way, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you all next week.